We had a comment on one of our videos from a Mr. Ian Rutter who said, how can I make a portrait, a moody black background portrait without a black background cloth? Ian, stop being so tight. Go and buy some black cloth, a bit of black velvet. But I'm only joking. There is another way. Notice where I'm standing here. There's a doorway and look, it's pretty much black inside there, isn't it? To my eyes, it's not black. I can see all the way in there to the back of the hallway. So one of the foundations, one of the building blocks of photography is to understand that your camera sees light completely differently to the way your eyes see light. But Mike, I hear you cry. I can see some sort of a detail in that doorway. I can see this thing just here. There's a white thing there, isn't there? What is that white thing? Well, it's the post at the end of the stairs. But you see, I can see every detail in there, but in your camera, in you watching me in the film, you really can't so much. So why is that? Well, the light out here is many times brighter than the light in there. And so as the light is falling off, the camera can't cope. Our brains create an HDR image in our heads of everything that we see. But the camera really only has one bite of that cherry. And so the light is falling away. Now, when we go inside, you'll start to notice that we have got, it's gonna get dark for a moment. Look, as the exposure changes to keep pace with me, you see, we've got like white walls. You now can see the back of the hallway a bit, but the back of the hallway is really quite dark, isn't it? That's because from here in the doorway, light is falling off as I kind of come down through here. It's falling away and getting darker and darker and darker as we come to the back. Even though the video camera is now at its widest aperture, you can hardly see me. Right, let's put it into practice. Let's shoot a portrait. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the awesome Abby Hills once <laughs> again. So, Abby, we're going to do another one of your splendid headshots. Look, she's got long hair since last time. I keep looking up here into a monitor instead of here in the lens because I can't actually see the lens properly. Right, let's go back outside, folks, and shoot a bit of a portrait so we can see how this actually works. You see how the light just changed then as we kind of came outside? I'm glancing at the monitor on the video camera as we're doing it because then I can see what you can see and I can comment. I'm not ignoring you and avoiding eye contact. Right, the important thing to think about is we need to isolate stuff. So if we're gonna have Abby against the dark background, you can kind of see at the moment I'm against the dark background and so is Abby. We wanna lose these door frames here. Abby, can you just go to one side just for a tick? Thank you. We wanna lose these door frames here because they're not gonna look so good in the shot. We wanna isolate what's going on in the background. So a longer focal length, because it has a narrower field of view, means that we'll be able to do that and just use what's in the hallway as our background. What about that white post down there at the bottom of the stairs? Well, it's really simple. Come with me just a tick. That could interfere with our shot. This down here, this could interfere with our shot because it is quite bright and it is quite close to the light source, which is the doorway. How about just, just getting a coat, just get a dark colored coat and just hang it over the end of the stairs. You know, think, use your brain box. Let's go back out, Lorna. <coughs> think, use your brain box, your brain block. Your brain is the foundation of all your photography. Think about things. Don't just do it and go, why didn't it work? Question it, think about it. Abby, <coughs> my lovely Abby. Whoop, about there. Now what we've got to do is line Abby up so she's in the middle of the doorway, not to one side. And by playing with the focal length as we do the shot, and start to isolate Abby within the door frame. So like if I have my focal length a little bit short and also let's say the camera that way up, landscape way up, well that's not going to work very well is it? Because we've got the door frame there. So turn the camera up the other way, make it suit the shape, extend the focal length and that's cool Abby. Now the first thing that's going to happen because Abby is wearing a black jacket against a black background is the camera's going to try and make that great and it's made her face much too bright. So underexpose. I'm underexposing by 1.3 stops so that her face is correct but the black on black kind of works. Look at that. It's really great working with you Abby because you're such a moody cow. <laughs> made her laugh didn't it? <laughs> But anyway, okay, moody one, cool. 
and we've got that black on black look and something which has worked really well over here guys is abby is wearing black on black but the shininess of the leather is picking up some of the light that's out here and it's giving little glistens and sparkles but she is against a totally black background see how easy that was Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be notified each time we upload one of our cool photography videos or for more great photo tips, workshops and training, come and see us at our website, photographycourses.biz.